Hello and welcome to the channel. I've got the pleasure of making an announcement for a new product feature. And this product feature is .NET Framework Custom Code Extensibility Support in Azure Logic Apps Standard. This is in public preview. So let's dive in, let's get uh, more details. So we've recently announced public preview of .NET Framework Custom Code. And this will allow you to author custom .NET Framework c -sharp code in VS Code and then be able to call it from a workflow. We will provide a local debug experience for both code and workflows, meaning you can set breakpoints for your code, breakpoints for your workflow, uh, debug and jump between the two. And uh, we've got a seamless experience for you there. Now, how this works, some of the mechanics under the hood, is when you compile your custom code, we provide a build task, and we will bin place your assembly and any of its dependencies into the lib custom net472 folder that exists in your workflow project. Now, if you're familiar with our XSLT plus .NET Framework support, this is the same folder that we do use for that capability as well. Now, in terms of what do you do with this, like how do you deploy it? You deploy your project just as you do today. Uh, so whether that's, you know, right mouse click deploy. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Friends don't let friends do that. But uh, this will basically take care of it. Basically that folder will go along for the ride uh, with the rest of your configuration. And if you do CI CD today and you go ahead and deploy uh, basically your, your project, your logic app, and you have say maps or schemas that show up in artifacts, same thing. Right, so all you'd want to do is compile your code before you deploy and make sure the bin placement takes place and then you're good. Um, also, you see that uh, there's the assembly upload in portal as well. Uh, so say it lands in the same spot. And then last but not least, this is a useful feature for some of you folks that are still in your journey for migrating BizTalk uh, scenarios or use cases. Uh, naturally, custom code support is, is big in those architectures and this should greatly help you uh, in that journey as well. All right, let's talk a little bit about prerequisites. So we do have uh, naturally VS Code. So you do want to ensure that you've got a working installation of VS Code with Logic Apps. So here is a link to the prerequisites. Uh, I'll make sure that's in the video description but make sure you've got that all in order before you go ahead and try this. So uh, nothing really new here other than the existing prerequisites. Also, uh, this is for Microsoft Windows. So that is something to call out. And, you know, naturally, like we're not using the, the Mono project or anything like that. So we are dependent on .NET Framework, hence, hence the Windows requirement there. The other thing is like we are supporting .NET Framework 4.7.2, this is the same version that BizTalk supports. So that would be, this exists with the XSLT plus .NET Framework as well. So, you know, in the event that you've previously compiled some assemblies to be .NET 4.8, uh, you'd want to downgrade those. Uh, so get them back to 4.7.2. Obviously, if you're calling into these older, um, you know, .NET Framework assembly versions, that should be fine. Like that's where the standard interop should take place or should work unless obviously there's been breaking changes, which is kind of outside of our scope, but uh, generally you should see some success there. Now, one thing that's pretty important to discuss is a new concept that we're introducing. Well, technically it's not new for VS Code, but it's new for, for Logic Apps is when you go and you have the Logic App extension installed and you know if you've got this already installed, this should automatically update for you. You'll click on the Azure A, you'll head over to Workspace and then there's a new icon here and uh, it's called Create New Logic App Workspace. Now, this is, is very deliberate on our part. Uh, what we do need to do is, like we made a decision early that we're not gonna co-mingle custom code and workflows, right? So we're going to leave the workflow project largely intact, you know, with the exception of like the lib folder, but otherwise in terms of like the mechanics of the workflow project, we wanted it to be exactly the same. So as a result, when you go ahead and go through this new wizard, uh, you're going to have a workspace file that is created. You're gonna have the opportunity to name it. And then what we do is we provision two sample projects for you. There's gonna be a functions project and there's going to be 
a workflow project. And so that's where you can see this hierarchy from that perspective. So um, this is kind of think of it like a solution in Visual Studio. If you go back to the BizTalk days, you know, you would always have, say, your orchestrations in one project, you'd have your helper assemblies in another project. And so it's very similar from that perspective. Now, one thing to note, um, you know, I didn't really get into this earlier in the intro, but I think it's pretty important is because we're only deploying a logic app here and we're taking assemblies and bin placing them, your process, your workflow and your code will run in the same service plan. So you will not need to provision another service plan to get this to work. This is all going to work in a single service plan. And that's, you know, beneficial for a few reasons, including um, not having to sort of secure another surface area uh, because this is going to be running locally on the same box. Uh, you're not going to have like a public endpoint uh, to be able to go ahead and access that, that custom code. So this is uh, another important concept. So the compilation, right? So you've got your functions project, you've got your class here, you write your code, and then you go ahead and build it. And, and so we do have a build task included in this sample project that's going to bin place it's going to take the basically output of this folder and you know copy it into your net 472 folder here with the assembly and any of the dependencies so uh, that's something just to be aware of the built-in action that you're going to see is going to be looking for code here uh, we have a drop down and if you haven't compiled it's not going to be able to find anything the other thing worth noting is that we do have this function.json file that we do create so here we've got our class my weather forecast we create this folder called my weather forecast as well. And then we've got a function.json file within it. This file is pretty important. It includes the metadata about your custom code, like your method. So all of your inputs, all of your outputs and their types, this is going to help us greatly when we talk about dynamic content. Now, speaking of dynamic content, uh, once you've compiled your code, you're in your workflow, uh, you're going to be able to add this action. It's a built-in action called call a local function in this logic app. You're going to have a drop down. Anything that's been compiled and that is like uh, verified or accurate will show up in this drop down list. So here I've got a function name called my weather forecast. Then what will happen is when I select that, the parameters will automatically be drawn for me. So here we've got two input parameters, zip code and a temperature scale. Um, I can hard code those if I want or I can pass values in, uh, say from my trigger in this case, and we're going to respect that and pass that through. So that's the in input side of things, and the outputs is exactly the same, right? Because we've got that metadata in the functions.json, and we go to, say, our uh, a downstream action, in this case, our response, and we go into our body and we click on the uh, lightning bolt, we can see all of the values that are available for us. So in this case, our custom code is returning a complex type. And so we see that being represented here. So this works much like you would expect it with dynamic content. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo and let's see this in action. All right, let's go ahead, let's start from the beginning, start from scratch. So we've got all the prerequisites addressed and we're going to now create our workspace. Okay, so we see our new icon here, create a new Logic App workspace. So first thing we're gonna be asked is to select a folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've selected my folder. Now I need to provide a workspace name. So I'm gonna call this public preview demo. Now I need to provide a function name. This can really be called anything, but we're focusing on getting the weather. So I'm just gonna call this like weather forecast. Now I need to provide a namespace. I'm just gonna call this contoso.enterprise. Once again, doesn't really matter. Now we're gonna include a, a basically a workflow as part of this. So we're gonna just choose stateful and I'm just gonna call this my workflow and then we'll open it in the current window. So these are just some of the initial prompts that'll help us sort of build out this, this whole template we're providing. As discussed earlier, we've got like the workspace here, we've got our functions project here, we've got our logic app project here. If we go ahead and head over to our function. Uh, here is the code. We've got a uh, function which we had injected the name weather forecast. We've got a default method of run 
And then we've got a few different inputs. We've got an integer for a zip code. And we've got a string for temperature scale. And then we're going to respond with a complex type called weather. So here I've just got a, a class defined for weather. We also have injected the namespace correctly as well. So we want to be able to build this now. Uh, so nothing's been built. We don't have our lib folder created in the workflow project. So what we can do is just click on terminal, new terminal, and then choose functions as, as the project folder. Now what we're going to issue here first is a .NET restore command. So just type .NET and then restore. Make sure we've got all of our prereqs set up properly so that should be quite quick and successful. Then we're going to issue a .NET build command. Now you could also go up here and go terminal, run build task as well, and then choose the function, but uh, I'm in the command line anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and use that. This should take a couple of seconds to complete. And now we see we've got our folder in place, right, with the prerequisite, our DLL and the functions JSON. Uh, maybe let's just take a quick look at that uh, file as well. Uh, so here, like we take care of all of this for you, but this is where you start to see like your inputs and you know the direction, it's an input as well. We've got our input schema, we've got our output schema. So this is all metadata that we're going to use uh, when we're in our workflow project and using the built-in action. So now let's go ahead and let's open up the designer for our particular workflow. Okay, so we've got this sample workflow that we've created. Now, naturally, you know, if you're creating a new workflow, this will work as well, but just come in here and just search for local and you should find the local function operations, right? So that's the action that we're interested in. Now, we do want some dynamic content here, so let's go ahead and make this a little more interesting. I'm just gonna create a value here called zip code and then sample value that was an integer you may might recall then we're going to create another called temperature scale and this is a string we're just call this celsius okay just to make things a little bit interesting so here we've got our function this is that drop down right so if we go ahead and add other functions here we would just recompile and then we should see them in the drop down these are hard coded these are just part of like the our, our template here, but if we wanted to get rid of these and now use dynamic content, we certainly would have the ability to go ahead and do so. So here we go. Now, same thing with outputs. Uh, we do have like a body, but we can be a little bit more imaginative here. So we've got uh, all of the different output options here. So we can say the temperature in zip code. is current weather. We can just then go ahead and hit save. So we're now ready to go ahead and call this. So what we do need to do is, uh, well, we can set up the debugging. I think that's a good feature to show you right here while we're about to do that. Just gonna set a breakpoint here. We can also set a breakpoint in our workflow.json, let's say right before we go ahead and call it. So with that set up, we can now enable our debugging. When you come over to the debug tab here, start with your logic app first, hit the play button. Also, I made a mistake here. We need to start up Azurite. Uh, when you're using Azurite, select the logic app project. Okay, so those are all started. Now we should be able to attach to the debugger here. This will take a few seconds. So you will know things are set up properly when you see basically these functions load up like the HTTP endpoint and a workflow action trigger and the workflow dispatcher. So that's when you know that things are in good shape. We now need to go ahead and enable the .NET functions like because we're good, we set a breakpoint. Uh, otherwise we wouldn't have to, but we're gonna need to do that in this scenario. And so like, that's good. We've got everything working. If, when this turns orange, you know you're in good shape. Okay, we're now ready to call our workflow. Let's head over back to this project view, find our workflow, click on overview. 
Okay, and you will know you're in good shape when two things happen here. One, you have a callback URL. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. The other thing is you've got a run trigger button. Now, if you didn't have any of those inputs on the trigger, you could just call this as is and execute it. But uh, since we did add parameters, we need to uh, go ahead and, and call it externally. So I'm just gonna use Postman here. Let's paste in that request. Let's now go ahead and call our function. We should see our debugger here light up right away and we should be able to then step through our, our solution. Okay, our debugger has lit up here. So here we've got our workflow. Then what we can go ahead and do is use our sort of typical sort of uh, operations here, like stepping into different uh, lines of code. If we want, we'll also see like the variables pop up here as well that allows us to go ahead and, and sort of further inspect. Uh, here, now we've jumped into the code part, right? So if we hover, we should be able to see like values that come in, um, you know, add watches, you know, et cetera. Like basically this is all what you'd be able to expect to do in a debugger, right? So here we can step into, and then if we want to just jump ahead, we can just hit F5 here. Okay, so that has executed. Uh, we can see like our response has come back inside of Postman. And then if we head back to our overview page, uh, we're gonna see that we've got a succeeded result. And much like you would expect with any other sort of logic app, uh, we've got the dynamic, or sort of the inputs and outputs as part of the run history. So we can see exactly what was passed in and what was basically returned. So that is sort of the demo. That's kind of the base experience. Obviously you can go ahead and extend this as you see fit. Uh, I think the mo most important thing, like if you want to say add more functions to this, uh, you can keep them in the same CS file. You can go ahead and just basically copy and paste this section here, change the function name, compile, then you should see it show up in that dropdown. Uh, but yeah, that's custom code. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear how you uh, would use this feature. And uh, for now, this is .NET Framework Focus, but if there's other languages that you're interested in, basically our model here is extensible. So uh, open to feedback on sort of what other needs you might have involving custom code. Thanks again. Take care.